the defense secretary's announcement about this new deployment. He says this is about deterrence, about keeping this conflict within Israel and Gaza and not having it spread wider. However, you look at the things that the U.S. is now sending to ground-based missile defense systems. While President Biden has said he will not be putting U.S. troops on the ground in Israel. So it really makes you wonder where these systems would go. Of course, the U.S. does have troops in the region. There's 2,500 in uh, Iraq, another 900 in Syria. And of course, just earlier this week, some of those troops came under attack from drones. So potentially, these systems could go there. Of course, just uh, off of the coast of Israel in the Mediterranean, we have those two aircraft uh, aircraft carriers, as you said, with some thousands of personnel aboard. But certainly sending these ground-based missile defense systems may show uh, further escalation of this, even though the U.S. still is framing it as deterrence. Mm. Uh, Heidi, just how much public support does Biden have now for stepping up U.S. mobilization to back Israel? That's right. Now, given his promise to the American public that there would, no be, would not be U.S. boots on the ground in this, there was a poll taken earlier in the week by Quinnipiac, which found that 75 percent of Americans polled believe that it is in the U.S. national defense, national security's interest to aid Israel in its defense. And Biden is using that sentiment. He's asking Congress for uh, an additional $14 billion to aid Israel. Uh, that's what he's asking on paper. In practice, it, it's going to be difficult, given that right now the U.S. Congress is at a standstill for the lack of a House speaker mm -hmm. and for given uh, budget fights that are likely to be on, on the horizon. But at this moment, sentiment in the U.S. does appear to be on the support of, on the side of supporting Israel further. Make sure to subscribe to a channel to the latest news from RDZ World News.